I want us to just close our eyes so that we just appreciate God. Father, we want to appreciate you because of today. We thank you because you are the Lord. We thank you because you are God. We say to you, in all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, that we call on to you now today is not by number. But God, we have prepared ourselves, O oh God, to get something, O oh God, from here today. You don't know what you want to speak about, but God, the Bible says the spirit of faith and infirmity grown it, we cannot be altered. But I will pray that you speak at the point of our needs today in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, concerning anybody that is struggling now. The Bible says, though your beginning may be small, but your ending shall be greatly increased. But I pray that we pray for the anointing to of lifting up. Bestow upon each and every one of us now in the mighty name of Jesus. We say, go before us and may the go keep us straight in. Father, by the time we finish our lecture today, Father, you are going to give us a new dimension to life. And we are going to live and know that we are going to be existing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am sorry for coming a little bit late. I almost, by virtue of what was supposed to be before me, supposed not to be here today. But I have to, but as a matter of fact, I was receiving a call. I just have to be here. Ordinarily, receiving that call is also wasting my time. So I have to cut off that. I just have to be somewhere now. Uh, I also come supposed to be in a theater. I pray God let this person deliver safely. She delivers safely. Another person was coming in. So I said, no, I have to be here. So that is the trend of sin. But uh, uh, we bless God. I got a message from our brother today. I don't know how long my time is supposed to be. But that message actually touches my mind because uh, when you say I should come and talk about success, because I still believe that I'm still working towards a particular goal. Because success has its own definition, which is, means that it is an accomplishment of aim and purpose. You may see some people that, okay, they have gotten to a place. That good thing may stop with one truck, can stop with 10 trucks. But I don't think he has, we can even count the number of trucks he has today. Maybe it's not ending there. He actually diversified to other things. So, by his aim, if he has not achieved his aim, we cannot, in his own self, he cannot divine himself to be successful. But there is an average at which we want to move into. We start from the time we struggle, we time from the time we try our best, to the time that we move in from that particular realm to the realm we call the realm of abundance. In the realm of abundance, many things become very easy. For us to do when you want to save you begin to save money you just want to buy a small car you begin to save money to for it pastor reminded me of my car that was stolen at ring road here you don't think but when it was mentioned in as if they give me that kind of a car i don't think i can even drive it again today it was supposed to be the best car that i use my hard and money to buy in those days i think we are getting what i'm saying so in quotes they are true success. And when you start from grassroots, we should understand one thing. Success has its own principles. When we follow the principle of success, you continue to remain at the top. And that is what I want to teach us today. So by the definition, I say uh, the accomplishments are aim and purpose. That is what we call success. Now from the topic, my brother said, message to and the topic of the message is that uh, I got this message uh, about a uh, few days. He said, please sir, uh, just a reminder tomorrow meeting where you'll be teaching us practical success from principle. And I'm putting back uh, from yourself as an example. I was thinking I would be able to put some other people that, uh, so if somebody is referring to me as myself, so what do I want to say about myself? That is where the question is. So if anything, I will be saying it. That way, I will have to be referring to myself now. That means the message is streamlined. So if you now can't see to be success, 
No problem, we take it like that. But I believe that this, I can see that God has given us that grace. He said that we are inclined to make things for that. So when I look at the practical principle of success, I want to start from the aspect that what are the components of this thing. He said practical success principle. That means in this we talk of success. Success is the total outcome of the whole thing. Then we talk of the principle. That means there must be some guidelines we have to follow. And the third part is the practical aspect. That means what do you do to achieve the success? One thing is happening, and uh, 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 it's important in this place is that uh, uh, when you see the child, when I want to, when we started my life, starting from my example now, I was looking at people that used to, these are genetic engineers, these pilots, I just want to be, because I was, I have my, this thing is in best student in physics and mathematics, I don't really like biology because, uh, Medicine goes with biology and co like that. So one time my mom was just making jest of me. One time I said, "This is what I want to become." I said, "No, that he uh, uh, doesn't want that." That she works. okay. She discouraged me one way or the other with one statement I want to repeat. I don't want to repeat. And I blessed her when she died last year, and uh, which was one of the things that I miss most in life. I don't have a. F- At least she's the only one that I have. I don't have grandfather. I don't have grandmother. My mom was an orphan. So, but I learned so many things from her because we were six and she raised every one of us up. Now, Bible makes us to understand, it said we wish above all things that we prosper and be in it, even as our soul prosper. Not only that we prosper in life, even our age, everything, it is the wish of God. So, because you are making it, you, the, 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 the Lord is happy about it. So, God is interested in your success. But one thing is that the God give us the way. It's just like we give you the road map. But you have to drive the car. So, how do you want to drive the car? And that is the principle we want to talk about today. Now, when my mom said something like that at that time, there was not a time my brother, a dad brother was struggling. He wanted to go in for medicine. He got in as a micro, but he was not able to meet the cutoff because of jam. Which some of our students and our children may also be passing through some. But my brother he wanted to become a doctor. Me, I wasn't interested, though I was brilliant. So, he was able to give, given microbiology, this one is not a doctor. My mom now called us one day and said she had a dream that one of her son is a medical doctor. So, when I was filling my jam, unfortunately, there is no room for aeronautic engineer in Nigeria then. I have to go in and apply for uh, what was it called? Medicine and surgery. But lo and behold, when the result came out, they gave me an admission as a catchment area in Yudkwara State. They gave me second admission. So I have two admission letters with different numbers. So if you are bearing my name, you can also enter together with me. That was in University of Illinois. Now, the dream was fulfilled at that area. Why did I have to choose medicine? Uncle, that's the elder brother of my brother. He has a problem. And when my mom actually took him in the house, there is this thing, I don't know, maybe you know what they call Anya. This man used to groan in pain because of uh, when that thing is strangulated. We were young in those days. My mom actually took, uh, I took him, saw that we were taking care of him because of that. So when he was in that category for some times, we the, the, the place is a local place in a, they call the uh, the place Omaran. There is a Rure as well. They were supposed to operate this man because we don't have enough money. Then my mom can only avoid money for one side of the surgery. The, so, the ania was bilateral. We call it bilateral ania. So they did one of the surgery and the man was okay. Later the man developed problem with the second one, but there is no enough funds. What I want to draw my t- attention at the end of the day is that that second one, after some years, God strangulated, killed the man. Anytime I sit down, when I now look at it, okay, a doctor then supposed to do the two surgeries together. But he said we cannot do the two surgeries together. We have to do it one by one. So he tried to go for one, leave the second one. Eventually, the second one now killed the man. So what's the essence at the end of the day? Where I assume something, the destiny have its own path. 
And when destiny has its own plan, that means there is a time for everything on earth. The time to do it is now. And we have to work with it. This woman now the opportunity to live for life. But the little time they live, what is her contribution to their life? I put in for medicine and I go in, in for it. Now today, there are some times when I see these people and I want to operate a patient that have that kind of thing. I remember this man. I said, look at what my mother cannot afford. I said, then, this is what I'll be doing. I'm saving some people's life with. Now, that's on one side. When we talk of the principle of success, it's based on three things in life. The first thing, the thoughts that we think. What is that thing that is going in your mind? Two is what are the image that you visualize? How do you see yourself? Then three, the action that you take. In the concept of the thought that you think, that was a time I want to lay the foundation of a house. When I want to lay the transition of my establishment at that time, it was laid in a place where it was a dis the disguise. I didn't know that I bought a land very close to a river bank. It was bought during dry season. So after I got it, with, and there was a church just in front, so you cannot even see, uh, you know, most of this uh, lake church or that church, they might be very close to a river, but it's not something like that. So, and they, uh, there was this break there that I called, not drew my attention, said that place is a stream. The one said that, ah, I should sell this place and uh, get it somewhere else. The man, I had an engineer at that time, he now said that, uh, the man mentioned one thing. He said, if anybody will build house in this place, it is only those people who have money that can build house in Naja or where is the uh, 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 river Rhine area in Lagos? that they can actually build houses there. Lucky, like something like that. The engineer now said that, you know, come, I invited everybody there. We've be, gotten the house to the Lintel level. Everybody said, we are going to demolish the house back because they didn't put in the DPC on the house. So, during that time, they called me. They said, the engineer, one engineer said, don't worry, they, will not, they are not going to do it. There is a way they can do it. Just give me some sense of hope. So he said, I should come back in two weeks. He will have made everything normal by then. The man used his own personal money to demolish the building and now put everything back to DPC. And when I got there, I was surprised. He said that if he, has, he can see the way I felt, it was my last money as the one I had that time was used to build that house. But the Bible says something. It says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? That is the foundation of the house. That's why our foundation has to be strong. They have to go back. Now, when we started it, it was just like it was then. The man said something. He said, the, what we need to do in this place is to put a retaining wall to the river bank so that at least the water is, uh, is seasonal. So let's put the retaining wall there. Retaining wall was kept there. And during that particular time, everything was going on smoothly. Today, I just thank God that I did not regret that I left that place. Because that was the place God actually wanted to implant you. What am I saying in essence? It's because you have a passion for this thing. You walk towards it. There must be obstacle along your way. And when you are going through classes, when you are training up a child, when you wake them up, they begin to cry. Sometimes you don't know that when, it's, when they, they grow up, they are used to it. They wake up early before you, they go to school and come back. When they finish the school, they will be the one that will be taking care of you. So you are not, you, when you are passing through a learning process, you should always expect that you are having a goal. And what is that aim of what you are having? What is inside you? As long as you can dream it, you can achieve it. So keep dreaming. So the three principles lie from the thought. What is that thought that I have? I don't have money for a house to live, but I have money that I don't. I can start where I can be doing certain things. So the business first. So I invested in that. 
Now, the second thing is that what do you visualize? We can visualize that if I can stay in this place, people can come. And sometimes when I go out to pay for using the money in the theater for surgery, for other things, I can, that one can also be a source of income for me. Now, the question is that you cannot, the, the Bible says something. It says, can you see if somebody that is, uh, you, you light your candle and you put it under the bosom? So, how will people see you? So, now you are not just by the, and I told you this place, even myself that was in that place, I don't know there was uh, water that is flowing in, in front of the house. So, when everything, one, one spirit will want to discourage you, but that is when another aspect comes. He said, the gift of a man make it room for him and bring him before great man and this, the divination of success. You don't need to have a place. You don't need to hold anything for you to be successful. People will call you all over the world. I'm not sure if those musicians that we can see that okay, they actually become famous, they have a particular play, they, they invite them here, they invite them, they, they give them views. What is that gift that is in you that can make you to be successful? If you are working something that is not in line with your gift, you are in a wrong route. Pastor called me one day and I know you will have forgotten. It's not because of anything, everything he thought it was foolishness. But I've done it many, many times. But the grace of God is sufficient for you when you are doing it. Though we also have something again. The Bible says, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. I was taking a risk that would have been detrimental to my life. But I've taken enough risks, more than that in the, in the past. And they have been beneficial to my life. But then we have to be careful. And what are we going to be careful for? To pastor, to the people that we can say you value so much and that is to your, vow, uh, to your spouse. I was sleeping in the one time. You know, that was the time I was doing my residency in a teaching hospital in Oshogo. I was sleeping one time and there are some people somebody that is very dear to me. They called me. It was pastor that called me in the midnight. I need that person. It's also very dear to pastor. They said, ah, this person's labor is not going fine and they told them they are going to do cesarean section. I said, Pastor, what do you want us to do? He said, ah, and now I'm not. We are speaking around 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the night. And I said, Pastor, I'll be coming down to Ibad. Ah, well, the country was not as bad as this that time. I moved any time. I've moved any time of the day before. Before some time, it even been in Ibad, they were coming from that place. So that day, as I called my wife, I said, I'll be on my way to Ibadan. So I'll be in Ibadan, maybe in the next. It's just a matter of me looking at the time. I'll be there. So my wife said, ah, is it not too dark for you to come at this time? She doesn't look at time like that. She discouraged me. The pastor called me back again. He said that, uh, I'm thinking it is too dark. There is a doctor here, but I don't know the strength of the doctor. But can we just pray for this doctor for God to touch his heart or to take over from him and let everything be successful? We pray concerning the doctor and the surgery was successful that particular day. What am I saying in essence is that pastor saw that it was stressful for me, but me, I'm not seeing any stress in it because that is the kind of job I've chosen to do. So when you are doing something that they can say you can freely do it, stress yourself to do it, and you don't see it as stress, that is your calling. So, when people seal you, if, like, uh, in, in, in essence, the third thing that you need to do is that you just have to dream and you aim. In what you are doing, there is time for everything. What do you want to achieve in the next one year, in the next two years? Every year, I have a target of what I want to achieve. And no matter how, I, how much I move, I achieve my success based on that particular thing that was achieved that year. I told you it may mean I've achieved so much, but to me, that is my target. And once I achieved it, every other thing is Father Christmas. 
take time to help others because that's the time you bring others up. Now, the third thing which most of the time we lack most of the time is the time that we take action, which is our behavior. Many of us know it. Many of us dream it, but we don't take action. But we should not despite the times of little beginning. We want to acquire much before we can do it. You cannot bring somebody to Asso Rock to go and stay there and be governing Nigeria when he has not passed through the training of how to unify the family or unify some other things. People may say, Gwari failed us, this one failed us. Many of us, even if you put pastor there, they are likely to fail us. In fact, God is not even interested in the Christians sitting down in that place. He said, the art of this is in the hand of God. And like the river of water, he directs it to wherever he wastes. No matter who is sitting on the throne, he said we should pray for our leader. There is a special anointing, special grace that is given to them. That's why if we keep on cursing them, God will keep on blessing them. Because that particular office has been assigned with his own blessing specifically. We rise to the top, but when you do it in the right way, that thing will last in your hand. So, we should decide upon our major definitive goal in life and then organize all your activities around it. Then, continue to nurture it. I was in this church for some time, I think about a few weeks ago, somebody was celebrating birthday here and uh, uh, my wife was telling me when I got to the house that time, I said that... Uh, 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 made of it used to make some of our clothes that I used to think that it was uh, imported clothes that particular time. I said, ah, okay. Oh. So I don't know that the woman is, uh, can do, I could have even tried to even bring my own to, but even if I do, I don't usually have time to wear it. So because I may be wearing some other thing. What am I saying that she, if that is her feed, if she walk diligently in that side, the sky will be her limits. People will come and she will walk. And you know one thing? When your work begins to over choke you, you cannot be successful in life completely with this your hand. You need to get a power that will do it for you. Because I say, I say by, for by strength that shall no man prefer. Not only because you are proud. But because human being has his own limitation, if God that created heaven and earth can work for six days and the seven days say the God, God rests, that means you yourself have the time to rest. There are some people that I work. There are some people that will come to the hospital like this. They know this is the time that I rest. If you even meet me around the way, we can just, but just tell me that you're having a day. I will turn my back against you. That is not the time I want to listen to. Uh, uh, what is it called? Medical condition. So now, we if once we have decided upon this thing, let us feed our soul with his own duty. It is the soul duty to be loyal to his own desire. What is your own desire? Decide desire a thing, and it shall surely be granted unto you. We are sitting down here today because. Some of us have decided that I want to be in the church today. If I did not decide that I want to come to this place today, I know I will not even be here. But if in the midst of me procrastinating and I didn't take action to that decision, you will find it that even though the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. What can now overcome the flesh? That's when you speak to your soul. The flesh is bound to obey what the soul really wants. That's why I say it must abandon itself to its own master passion. It's your own passion and it has to come. That's why you see some people are very sick. The husband called them. Oh, hey, daddy, oh, somebody called them. Come and see. I'm very tired. I'm just coming by from the house. I'm just coming down from the house. But let pastor call that person. Because of his own difficulty, every stress disappears. Ah, pastor, what do you say? That time, another strength comes from somewhere. That is what should be driving you when you are in your field. 
Now, what is that thing that you desire? Bible says, desire a thing and it shall surely be granted unto you. That is my field I was talking about. Your own field might be an engineer. Your own field can even be the means of making people to laugh. Look at some people that are making people to laugh and they are making it. Bible makes us to understand that I said, there is a gift in man. And the inspiration from the Almighty give it him understanding. That gift in you, being inspired by God, you have understanding on it and you move on. So, the first principle of success is passion. You have to be passionate. So, when you choose your field, I'm good in this area, then you have to have passion for it. I have passion for my work. When you want, God want to give you something, when you have a son, and that son, the little you gather in the house, if you have like, you have 1,000 in the house, the son comes back from school, pick 500 out of the 1,000, just went out, scatter it, now came back, ah, I put 1,000 in this place, that day I took it, I put 500, I, where is it, okay, I just gave it to some people, okay, no problem, you are my son, no problem. Now, pick another 250 out of it, went out, scattered the money. Uh, what do you use this money for? You are not using the money for anything reasonable. You are just scattering it. That, that's you. You will be keeping that money away from your own biological son so that it will not ruin your life. That's the same thing with God. So when you have it, you have to bring, that's why it said the law of the profitable servants. He has given you a gift. When you don't farm it, he said he went to the fig tree. He now said that uh, they've been coming, they water this thing, they do say, God, let's say, let us water it. Tomorrow. By that time, it's not water. Then you can cut it away. God is expecting us to be fruitful. You know, I want to say something in this life that uh, when we say we live in this world, the people that actually live in this world are the people that are fulfilled. You have everything to yourself. And uh, many people just exist in this world. We are just existing. You just see that these people have existed. What contribution, what impact are you giving to the society? Then the society say that you are the one that when, when you are no more, what can they say? about what your feel is there any vacuum you even create in your own self when you want to be successful in life create something that nobody can have never done and you know one thing there are still so many things that so, can be created in this world it's only the mind the 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 our self is the limiting factor the mind can go through any let of imaginations Recently, I was told that China suspended the bridge without uh, anything suspending it in the air. So, how can that kilometer of bridges, people will be walking, driving on it, and it will not fall down? We are using the law of gravity. Now, one of my brothers was trying to say, he said, that is true. Okay, myself, I don't really understand. But can you just look at ordinary plane that we are taking? About 500, as big as the was the mighty plane, international plane is, as big as this, many of us will go inside the plane, and the, the most important thing is it will lift itself from the surface of the earth, goes inside the cloud, beyond the cloud, and will be looking at yourself downward. The good thing is that if God says that you should trust me, and is the one driving you, and some people will say, I want to use my own knowledge to drive myself. When you are in the plane, do you know the pilot that is driving you? I know there is something I used to understand that most of the time when you are into everybody, there's some silence a little bit. Especially when you are going through, the plane is going through some turbulence. And they put on the red lights. Ah, palm, 
uh, we are distributing some uh, this thing alone, the thing, but we try to get over it and so in fact, if the pilot delayed to talk, we think maybe we want to say there is no hope. But what am I trying to say in essence? If you can trust the pilot that has lifted you right from the surface of the earth that you cannot see, if anything crashes over there, that is the end. How much more God that is teaching you all these things? But you know that it's human being like you that think of the love of uptrust. When I was looking at it in the secondary school, they said, I've got those laws of combining principles. Say, you call volumes of all gases, temperature and pressure contain the same number of moons. Now, Boyce's law, Charles' law, he said the uh, pressure, it talks about uh, what is it called, pressure and volume. There's eating equations. So all these things we combine together to move. Now, so to live is the realest thing in this world. Most people exist and that is all. We want to live, we don't want to exist. And when you live, you live beyond generation to generation. And that's what they remember. So I'm quoting some names now. Many of us that are science students, we know the names. We have boys' laws. We have child's laws. We have a good regardless law of combining principles. We have instant equation. We have Newton's law of motion. First law of motion. Second law of motion. Third law of motion. These are the laws that the aircraft used to lift itself. And we are talking of uptrust. You just need to throw somebody inside an ocean and it's floating on top of the ocean because of uptrust. What makes that thing to happen? So, now, the... Having established what we want in life, as we are writing it down, just like say said, when I've chosen through the guidance of my mom, again, I've chosen a feed. When I was choosing it, I don't know the end result, but I say, since my mom has now bought three that uh, she dreamed that one of his son is a doctor. And uh, my elder brother is not in medicine. Okay, let me apply for medicine so that we satisfy my mom. But well, fortunately, my brother read well. I became the best student and they crossed him for medicine. So my brother is now in medicine. So what am I doing in medicine? So, but notwithstanding, your dream in life can be guided in line with that. The second aspect is that you have established what you want to be. Then, take the risk. When I want to get married, I discover that I, one of my friends tells me something that, uh, even including my wife, that friend spoke with me last week, and I reminded him of what he told me that time. I said, if I have taken offense from what you told me that time, probably I wouldn't have been here today. I'm sorry, I'm not talking too much. Uh, I'm, I'm using myself as an example, little by little, because I don't want to deviate from that. The name of that, my friend, is Dr. Drew Jai. He's a medical doctor. The guy working in, uh, what is it called? And, and this, there is one hospital very, very tall like this at Mokola. What's the name of this hospital? Uh, uh, we do, eh? It's not Crown. T- hospital. Very tall like this at Mokola Roundabout. Uh, <laughs> group medical hospital. Then the guy was so broke to the extent that uh, because he used to delay his money payment in that time, and uh, that I have to be, you have to trek. We pretend he want to take Taizi from my office, and I will see him from the window that he trek, he's trekking that distance. In fact, he was so broke to the extent that the fiancé was trying to marry that time, decided to abandon him. I can't marry a doctor because this thing. Unfortunately, I met the fiancé at Dogo Center one time when I was trying to pack. I reminded the fiancé that. Because we came to beg you that time that uh, our friend, but our friend is the but don't let us, we don't, we're not using him as an example. What he said was what I want to say. I was working just like uh, 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 the pastor said, I was working in by the central hospital that time. And I called my friend, come and work with me. My salary is 10,000 more than his own. But before middle of the month, I'll go to my friend, please borrow me money. 
My wife thought she has a very good husband. Okay, because you know, maybe in the relative in those days, Dr. Sarah is still better than normal average graduate that are finished. But so we now say five doctors were contributing, so we are collecting money. So it's my turn to contribute. We fix our wedding to that. This person thought she has gotten a very good husband to marry to. So I and uh, we are contributing huge amount of money that time. But what we were able to uh, contribute that time was close to about 200,000 that time. So my wife was thinking that that one would be able to buy cake or something in the distance. When she came, she was living in Abuja. So when she came, my wife was so engaged in uh, buying shoe and bag so that she can sell it there. Anything she can use to assist wedding so that we can. Because I told you my mom's an orphan. So we have to still struggle within myself. So she came from Abuja that time when she thought that maybe I could have gotten enough money. I got the money quite right, but I spent 200000 It remains only 20000 in my pocket. My wife cried back to Abuja looking at the kind of husband she's going to marry. So she said, how oh, she, I cannot even explain how I spend it. And that is, and that is the way when I got a salary, that is the way the thing will go. So this, my friend, does not take pain to tell me to my face that time. I said, borrow me money. Say, oh, you are my friend. You are the one that brought me to this place. So, but what are you using money for? Do you know what I use money for? I sit down every time I collect salary. My younger brother is this. My elder brother is this. My cousin is this. My this one is this. I will not distribute my money. I, I believe another one is going to come. No, we're not prudent. It's not that it's bad for you to be doing certain things like that. But we have to be prudent. You have not gotten to the stage where you can scatter the entire resources that you have. Now, this guy told me this. I was telling the man last week when he called me. I said, do you remember what you told me one time? You said that. So I decided that I don't know how to save. When you see me anytime, you are not likely to see money with me. If you see me maximum, you are going to see 5000 or 10000 Even most of the time, you won't see anything in my pocket. Because there is no amount of money I keep in my pocket that will follow me back home. I will see some, if I'm driving like this and I see somebody that, my spirit will say, go and give this person. If I move, that spirit will say, I should reverse back or I should turn back and go and give. That is what I say. Sometimes we give some, I say, when I'm trapped, I say, I was, I would just be reversing and say, I want to give you this money. Something say I should reverse and come and give you. But if you don't need it, I can take it. They will say, I need it. They collect it. They will pray for me. Sometimes some people will wonder, what is this thing? And when you do it, you know what? Some things will relieve. But so I know I'm not that kind of person. So my thing is that let me give this thing to where I will not have access to it. So what I can see is what I can divide. My wife will say that it doesn't really matter. You do it this way, you do it this way, this way. but I know. That time you need to teach me. You have taught me. But now, I have to be prudent. So, what are the risks that you now want to take in your business? They said, if life is not challenging, then it is not, it's just like a waste. In fact, when everything is smooth for me, I used to be very, very careful. Because even the heart goes like this, up and down. And you know the one most important thing? We look at the down part as if God is for shaking us. That's the time God is ready to move us to the next level. You cannot be promoted without an exam. And once you pass it, you move to the next level. Jesus Piaget says something. Say, any crisis a man did not resolve, they will carry it over to the next level. So, when you see challenges... Take it as an opportunity to move. Now, so when we're not locked in the event, you should love failure. You should not be afraid of failure. When you take risks, you take failure. You know, there is this uh, Tyson Larin says something, in, and I'm sorry, many of you will be shocked the way I will say it, but that is the way it was quoted. But I will explain it. If you are successful and your road is not rough, it's not going to last. Why are successful children, they are men, when they have children, they don't want to pamper them so that they'll be able to know what is right in the future. 
Titan Aaron said something. He said that uh, be your road be rough. Some say we cannot be saying this kind of thing in the church. Say, I'm not cursing you. I'm wishing you what I wish myself every year. I therefore repeat, may you have a hard time this year. May there be plenty of trouble for you this year. Continue to rain courses, courses, courses like that. I've seen many people will now revive. When you are now saying, because okay, when I'm not saying, say that, okay. Now, if you think that I'm cursing you, what I'm just asking from you, though, why not just say, say to you, I ask for no more. I don't know if anybody knows that thing in Tyson Aaron's message. Your road be rough. I'm not cursing you. I wish you what I wish myself. I therefore repeat, may you have a hard time. You have plenty of trouble. Everything is full of curses. And when he handed it up, he said, if you are not sure of what you should say, why not just say, same to you. I ask for no more. He now started his story. He says, our sources in life are conditioned by the amount of risk we are ready to take. He now said he married the American astronauts. When they want to fire them inside the rocket into the space, they start counting from five, four, three, two, one, zero. As long as they count, counted the zero, they fire the rocket into the space. And when you go and you come back successfully, you are the goddess of this world. But when you go and you miss something, that person will continue to gyrate in the universe. And that's the end of that person. He said that if you go and come back, if their road has not been rough, they will not be what they're supposed to be. That was the essence of the story he's trying to give. So the same thing with us. Now, the only thing is just that we are better than those people because we have God that is guiding our own people. When I want to do my own, my mom was sent. When I want to take a risk, I take risk, nobody. But when I want to take some risk that will be detrimental to me, I know if pastor have not said, doctor, stay, let us pray for the person to undo that thing that time. That will be the time that will be problem. If my wife have not said, ah, don't come, it's like it's too dark. And the, they say, right from the multitude of counselors, there is safety. But since they are the same set of people that will say I'm coming and they will say, okay, no problem. They will be expecting me in social time. So, now, they love to feel and they, uh, they, if you look at most people in the Bible that have success, even including Jesus Christ himself, his road was, was rough. That's why in the, in the wilderness, he says something. He said, if it is possible, let this cup pass over me. That means you get to some places in terms of your challenges that you just look at. Ah, it's like the whole world is turning. But if it doesn't have a, if you don't have a vision, you don't know where you are going. You say, I'm going to, to that side. I'm coming through this a lot of road. I can pass through this place. Okay, if I want to be changing this, I move. The time I'm moving this door, very small passage is there. I move the other one. I get here easily. So, we should not despise that. If you know that you can sing, continue to sing, continue to get in. And do you know funniest thing? God has prepared people that will take you to the top. The down part is very crowded. Up part is still very, very available for anybody to occupy. And it is not by who you are. It is by anybody. You can be the son of non-entity. They're expecting you at the top. I sat down and I looked sometimes, I said that uh, I give glory to God for certain things, but uh, the way God makes some journey for you sometimes, I began not to be thinking of how I will get certain things again. My brother, take God somewhere. If you think God is just like this, we always behave like that. And if you think God is like a mansion, we always be behaving like mansions to you. When I laid the foundation of my house, I'm sorry again to give this statement, because I want to give this as an example, because you know it. So anybody know the Dove, is it Dove? Matrix Finish Station along at there or your, the, the name there was, uh, they changed the name to Matrix. That's when you go to get inside that day or your day. I have a friend, his name is uh, 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 Akimo Iru, we call him Akimo Iru, he's into oil and gas. And when I was building my house that time, 
I could not do the decking. You know, after the, you have demolished the house in the first place, so I have to raise money to get it to where it is. So I started, let me do one part, the other part. So in the midst of waiting, I told him, because that was the time they were building that house. He told him when he removed all the plant he used to make that house, he's going to give me so that I'll use it to finish my own. That was what I was waiting for. But fortunately, they said they also have to wait for some extra days then before that thing. But you know, one way or the other, God just made a way that that thing, I didn't eventually get anything from him before that thing was completed. I don't know how God did it, but everything went well. When I want to plaster the house, they were giving everybody loan in the teaching hospital. I, then I was a senior registrar. And they, uh, they just called me. They said that, did I need loan? Is there anybody that usually, to, if you are just sitting and somebody tell you, do you need, need a loan? And they said they are giving everybody loan and we should apply for loan. What is the maximum they are giving you? They are giving, assuming they are giving everybody two thirds of the loan. They said they can't give anybody more than that. In my own case, they give me the whole thing and I just apply. I don't have any collector, I don't have anything. They gave me no that. That was the time I wanted to plaster my house. What is God trying to do? Finish your house, move. And that was the time I was sleeping in uh, this uh, hotel. What is the name of this hotel in a. Uh, uh, this hotel in a very close to this place. Okay, I do. This I think is the mission hotel. What is the name of this hotel? When you get out like this, sir, Jubilee, Jubilee. I was sitting in my house and the, these people came to me to what was it called? They stole my car. I said because I was just entering the house, I parked the car in front of my house. Assuming they have seen me that time, they wouldn't have stolen my car. Yes. Now they came again, they said, okay, well, they knock my house. No, we are here now. I'm sorry to give you this example. Now I'm giving you an example that they, when they, they said that we are here now, in that house, something happened recently. I would think that it was, it was God doesn't like you. I have to leave Osoko to get to Yagonku that time. My wife was detained that particular time. That was why I was buying the equipment for my hospital that time. Some people came and they got to the house, they carried the equipment, and they said that that equipment is not for nurses to be used. And she told them it's more for my husband. My husband is a doctor. They don't want to listen. Because of me, somebody has given them information because she was heading a place, one place, and she sacked one of the person there, and the person's boyfriend was a police officer and was now misbehaving. So when they come, I got to that place and they called me and they said, I got there. They said, who is Dr. Mrs. Simon? They said, allow her to go. She left. I didn't know God is connecting me to the higher people that will save me in the future when the arm robber are on ground. Those are the people that we called. Three set of police officers, including SARS, came to the rescue immediately. I knew by narrow escape, those people disappeared. But we fought before they came. When we fought that time, I wounded one of them and they said I should not sleep in that house again. I was sleeping at Jubilee. It was in Jubilee that I was sleeping. They come in the night, knocking my room around 1 a.m. in the night. I was sleeping with my family. I was sleeping on the floor because I was trying. That was the same time the hospital releases that they give us a loan to finish the building. I hope you are getting what I'm saying. You know, things are becoming very tough. Can you see the way things are working together? They said they are from the reception. I said, stay at your reception. You don't even know what actually brought me to. And we are on the last flight. Look at the height of the last flight. I even have to jump from the window. The height I want to. What of my children? The following day, that was the last day I slept in that hotel. I said, you don't know what brought me to. You are waking up. Around the same time, those people knocked my house in the house. So, what am I trying to say? I haven't done that. Somebody came to me. He now knelt down like this. He said, Doctor, I so you have helped us so much. He said, uh, uh, My husband was building a house in Lekki. And that particular time, uh, they said he gave the, uh, what was it called? Uh, the, the aluminum man a specification. But the man actually brought something that is not what he wants. It's not the latest window. That the latest window for casement is what they are doing. This also, he said, he doesn't know if I need the window. I said, it's a wooden window. Bring it. The man gave me the entire window I was using 
in the old place. The question is that, why is he building the same type of house that I'm building in the pattern? That means God has prepared virtually everybody to finish it. So, you may think that uh, you have to have much before you get there. But God has prepared those people that will now take your hand from where you are to the next stage. Until you now get to the stage of abundance that you can now look and say you want to do it yourself. I'll forget what I'm saying. Because many of us, we know it, we dream it, but we don't take action. And what is that thing that doesn't make us to take action? Because we think we don't have the capital. Now, there is a way that we sit down to analyze some of these things. And in the issue of investing in ourselves and thinking of taking action on what we actually plan for, it goes a long way to make us to be where we are today. There are some people that we move on together. And those are our spouses and others. That when we are taking this risk, we can listen to them. They have our advice. They advise us sometimes. But we move on. When you cannot, when you can dream it, then you can achieve it. And when everything seems rosy for you, be careful at any particular stage. Even ordinary call, ordinary time, I suppose to do this thing to me. One thing is happening to everybody. You might be applying, some people may be applying for a job. And they said they've been applying everywhere. Nobody is giving them space. But meanwhile, there is a particular place that is looking for them and they don't see people of their qualification. Therefore, there is something that is available for everybody. Time and chance. When anything comes to your mind, the Bible says something that if your conscience does not condemn you, then you are free indeed. That conscience is also helping you. How would that conscience help you? When you are applying for something or you want to take a major decision in your life and you are sitting down and your conscience wakes you up, give you an idea, stand up, go and ask this person. This person may have an idea for you and you procrastinate. You might miss that opportunity. Because time and chance, they are open for you that time. Lo and behold, many times you have taken that decision and you get to the place. And they say, ah, you didn't tell me this thing before and they may call. And what you have been struggling for in the thinking of an eye, everything ends like that. I was a victim of these things sometimes. I sat down, it has never been like that. When my mother wanted to die last year, something came to my mind and said, I need to go and see my mom. And I told my wife, I said, ah, something is giving me some, I should go and see my wife. I saw something just, I rejected it that God forgives you, there will not be a problem, there is this thing. Now, the thing now become very strong, two weeks to the time of her demise. She wasn't sick, actually. And I told my wife, if my wife has altered the statement, you can go. I will have gone. I used to say it. It's not because she didn't live a free life. She lived a fulfilled life. But because I wasn't able to set my eye on my mother the year she died. That was the thing that paid me most in my life. I you know one thing. Even when I want to get married, I told my, wife, my mother. I said, pray for me. Do this. As we are moving on, the message I want us to get also is that our parent, pastor was saying something about the father the other time when he talked about this thing. He said that uh, let us remember them. You know when I was, as a particular time when I was looking, when I was uh, trying to struggle with my this thing, the thing is very difficult. 
And I look at my mom. When they were given testimony, my mom was arrested in Omaro one time. She was, she was using her car to carry passenger for us to get money for our school fees. And they took her to court. And when we got to court, and the judge was saying that, where, what is, has this woman, and they told her this is what she had done, and so, 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 so. My brother was in University of Illinois, he was in order 11. He came to the court. He now stayed with the mom. He said, who are you? The judge said, who are you? He said, is the son to the uh, mother. I said, okay. He said, what do you come to do in the church? He said, the mother is on the, this, you know, I told you I didn't have any other person. This is the only person that I have. So the two of us were also in the court. He said, we came to, what is this woman doing? I want to tell you that we live a life that when we wake up in the morning, we don't know what we are going to eat the next hour. I went to say something, say that uh, he provide for delivery, that be careful that God in heaven will provide for your needs and others. We, are, we think that it is not possible. I don't think the court says, we don't even have money to get a lawyer. The judge now said that uh, which level, like you say, is in a uh, hundred level you came from because of social thing. It's not asked out that uh, uh, the other group of people. What do you say this woman, the, uh, what is the offense of this woman? It's a social, social person. In fact, the judge now said that when, are you, are you not going supposed to be in school for your exam? He said he's supposed to be in the school for his exam. Okay. So, and then I asked her, well, so why is your mother doing this? And she said that uh, he, they are trying to look for his school fees. He has not paid his school fees. So he told the mother that I so, so, so thing. Say, it's just your school fees that your mother was trying to do all this. There are some judges that their brain has still very sharp. The man crossed the thing like this. He now dismissed the case from the court. That was in Omoaran. That same man that took my mother to, 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 to the court saw my brother. That my brother is now the state director for the WHO now. That he saw him when we were doing the border barrier. He remember and he went to prostrate. He said, hope he has forgiven him. He said, no, 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 it doesn't really matter. But what am I trying to say in essence that this woman was sovereign as at that particular time? And this was the way when we are now celebrating this some a particular birthday, they now mentioned that thing. When they mentioned that thing, I was weeping, and I made up my mind that no matter how bad, I'll be sending this particular quota to my mom every month. I know the more I'm doing it, the more God keep blessing me. The more I have the reason to be increasing it, and the more I have to do more. So please, anybody that have their own, no matter how small, remember those parents. They might not wait when you have made it completely, but the little you have, they will be praying for you. They also, their prayer is also very important in our day-to-day -day life. So the last thing I want to talk about in the issue of uh, this thing is that we should remove excuses. We also have reasons for our failures. Take 100% responsibility for every failure. If you take 100% responsibility for every failure, you will guide every area that you don't want to fail. Because when you Blame others for your failure. You don't give room for improvement. What are the definition of failure? When you see failure as an opportunity, what makes you to fail? Many of the students are here, or many of us are here now. When we are doing the exam, or we have one of of exam, after the exam, ah, the exam is too tough. Oh, the exam is just so, so, so. When they say, okay, ah, what do you take in number one? Ah, the number, the answer is A, is B, O. The number I see, so I'm sorry to say this, is a student that we understand this one. They said, okay. Or maybe they ask a question. 
and you now decide to write in an abnormal way, oh, you have missed this question. When well, you now go back to your book, you say you have missed it. Some people will finish their exam. And 90% of my friend does that. But I discover I don't do that. When you finish like this, and they're not saying that you so 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 thing that you do, that no, no, don't tell me that exam has gone, it has gone, it has passed. They are ready that either they fail them or they pass them. And if they are lucky, they pass them. Do you know the funniest thing? That thing that they didn't know, they are not going to know it again for life. Because according to the rules of Jabdim he has said any crisis you did not resolve in one stage, you will carry it out on to the second stage. It might be standing for them in the future where it needs that knowledge to solve that problem. That thing will become very difficult for them. When I see certain things, I go and ruminate over there. Did I get this answer? Oh, I missed this answer. So this is the right answer I supposed to have picked. Oh, I missed this thing. Even myself, my jam result, when they release it, I already know what I'm going to get. So, okay, so this is social thing. That thing, because you are reading it, you are not having more knowledge in line with it. So that thing will help you in the future. So, haven't gone through all those ones and you don't remove excuses in, uh, in, in all these things, it makes you to organize your time every day. What is my aim? What is my objective? And believe in what we call incremental improvements. If you live today and you say you want to rent a house of, uh, uh, you are starting a life you want to rent, you want to be living in a due place. And your total money can never take care of that. You start from, you see somebody that is living in a single room and is making progress for that single room to double room, from double room to a flat, for a flat to a duplex, for a duplex to a mansion, for a mansion, live in estate, live in a specialized thing. That time you are working, it is the time. You see, have you seen some people do something that doesn't even fit them? Have you ever imagined a secondary school person just finished yesterday and is now driving a limousine? How do you want to look like? The, one, the thing is too much for this person. Sometimes you see a lady that just finished a, a, what is called, a secondary school. She's using iPhone 11 Pro Max. What do you think? She's just the one that bought to be thinking that. What is this person doing? There's something that you use and doesn't fit you. My vehicle that was stolen that time is Mazda 66. I think that was what was raining that time. And it was a saloon car. I bought it to Kumbo and I'm managing it. When I bought that car, I didn't have money for plate number. I parked the car, I put this, this. People say I should buy it, but I say no, this is what I want to buy. They borrowed me money to complete it that time. I bought the car, no money for plate, no problem. I continue to take my car for the next two months. My mommy will give me money to go to teaching uh, to, for, for clinicals when I was doing my house job. But what is my target? I've achieved my aim. Let nobody make your standard lower down what you think because that is your driving force that will make you to achieve it their dream is not your own what is your dream know that it is your passion it is not every other person's passion i cannot sit down here and i said i want to become i like this car let me i want to mow the car that everybody will be buying i'm not an engineer Okay, I can say I want to do a minimal invasive surgery, which is laparoscopic surgery. I was in a place in a Hamrista. They call this Hamrista. I don't know, maybe you know the place. That's in the continent. I moved from New Delhi. That's in a Max Super Specialty Hospital. And they said there was a special place. They are learning a laparoscopic surgery. I said I want to do laparoscopy. They said we have to take flight there, and it's going to take us about uh, uh, some few hours before we get there. I said, okay, no problem. We landed in that country. I will not deceive you. The, everybody that I met there, they were just like Taliban. I'm sorry to you know, Taliban, people that are wearing this turban, even including their police. And the man that took me there that's supposed to be a doctor, 
Immediately we landed, they said I wanted to branch somewhere. That should take me to the other place. I was speaking to that. The writer does not even understand English. What kind of country? I look at my network. Except the time we are landing at the airport that I told my wife I'm in this country. They call the, the place Am Amritsa. That's the name of the country. Amritsa. They say, oh, say, oh, thank you. My network disappeared. My phone does not work again. That is the end. All because I'm searching for knowledge. That time, I spoke with the driver. The driver does not understand what I was saying. Where are these people taking me to? Even if I want to run, who will I run to? I look at the first bus stop that we got to, the police officer. Sorry, perhaps I don't know how many. <laughs> the police officer stopped us. You know, I told you the way the police look. I don't know, God forgive us because we are still, things are still safe relatively in this place. Because those people in the north that see Boko Haram, that see all these things. You know, I told you that the country is not as bad as this then. So, the police officer stop us. They are not stopping the car. They are stopping the car because of me. I don't look like them at all. At the time, I had to bend down in the car. And the one that is carrying me does not even understand me. You know, I don't understand my language. Cannot speak English. Cannot speak out. Even if it's outside, if it's his grammar, if anything, cannot even speak. I have to say, God, into your hand, I commit my spirit. <laughs> in the town, I bend down in the town. Anytime I raise my hands, it's up like this. People look at me. And when this man drops me, they drop in one big building like this. And uh, we are going inside the building. Inside the building. Why did I enter that building? I have some sense of relief when I got to the building. They wrote Mark Super Specialty Hospital. The same name with the hospital that I was in India. Thinking that they might have something to do in common. So I entered the building when I was dropping from the car. From the main road. Come and see the way people are looking at me. I enter. They say I should take elevator. Now I will not take elevator to where I will be going. So even if I want to run away from that place. There is no way I will know where I enter the place. I enter that place. I sat down inside that place. Not touching their patients. Now I sat down there. Some people came to me. I know those people are very friendly. They gave me in, uh, coffee. They said I should drink. I said I'm okay. They said no. Maybe it's their taboo for you not to be rejecting coffee. But I have to reject it because if I sleep there, nobody will know where that person is for life. I rejected it. So they are coming one by one to greet me. They are bringing their coffee. I said no. Okay, if it's a taboo for people not to take coffee, in where I come from, we don't take coffee. All of a sudden, the doctor that came, to the, that, that is in charge of that place, came to me. He said, are you Dr. Emmanuel? I said, oh, they've told me about you. Okay, go and dress up. Let's go into the charter. Me to touch a woman when in Nigeria, even in Sharia, we caught people's hands. He said, I should go and dress. I said, Let me stay there. He said, No, go and dress up. Okay, I dress up as a surgeon. I enter inside that car. What do we going to learn? Where the machine will be operating patient for you? We call it laparoscopy surgery. I enter the place. They put five women inside the. Removing surgery, when we want to do is director, we want to remove the womb. It can take us up to three, four, five, six hours to do that. This machine will do everything within 30 minutes. So we are there, and I sat down there. The man said I should touch. I can't touch women because I don't know the extent of the law in that place. But I have some relief that these people actually want to teach me. All of a sudden, the man that we came to the same country came. I think they invited him to come and do the remaining surgery. So the man, so I was free with the man because he can understand my language better. Even the doctor can. So we started doing Within five hours, we have operated almost 10 or 15 patients and uh, we left that place. So when I was going again, I said, I want to go to Hakka. They already know Hakka that was in France. I said, I want to know the best place where they can do this thing. And I went there again. We have this thing. And when we even got to the other arcade, what are they teaching me? It was all this speed they are using to. I said, when we have already had to man, you are teaching us with speed. I went there to waste my resources that particular time. But what am I trying to say is that in the course of your journey, there are some risks that you are going to take. And those risks, when you don't take them, 
when you don't take them, you don't move to the next level. God protection has been there. If I know that I will meet those kind of people in the Namibia, I won't go. But I thank God I learned a lot from that place and it's helping me as well. So, what am I trying to say in essence is that from the current level that you are, build yourself up. That gift in you, you might think that it is useless. A set of people no want it. Bible says, see thou a man that is diligent in his work, he will stand before king, not before mean men. This, do you know what you just want to have to do to make yourself better? You need to package yourself in such a way that if you hear somebody that is doing best in your feed, what is that person doing that is the best? That's making it to do the best. I want to go again to something that I know that God is helping us with. And when I see it, I say, God, I thank you for that. When I finished my medical school, I'm oh, sorry, my residency as a gynecologist, I was looking at God give you a gift in the there was a time they organized a, a seminar for women in a Ibadan Central. That's Odi Ferro. We have almost like 1,000 women coming to that place. And I say, it's like God just bless you with this thing. Let me go for specialize in you know, that's why I specialize in ONG. After ONG, when I'm seeing patients in teaching hospital and they say, these people needed a child, they have blockage. I cannot explain further how we are going to get children for them. We keep on writing tests, writing tests, writing tests, writing tests. When you are tired, I will not come to teaching hospital again. Carry your problem away. It won't affect our own salary. You are even troubling us. I'm sorry to say, most teaching hospital does not have solution to assisted conception. And you said you are a gynecologist. So, if you now want to have it, what can you do to provide solution to that? The only thing is for you to be able to manipulate gametes. What do you call gamete? You collect sperm from here, you collect egg from here, you make it as a woman being, you put the baby inside the mother. But you are going deeper to molecular level, to the level that we can, this thing is too deep for woman comprehension. If that is your limitation, you will not even do anything. That is the end of your, this thing. I have some consultants, some ogres. One of our girls called me, yesterday. He said, Dr. Emmanuel, I so, 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 the person was a C-Mark. I was like, oh, you have forgotten me for some time. So I said, I know, I didn't forget you, Emmanuel. I have a patient I want to send to you. These are my organs. What is the problem with this patient? Okay, this patient has chasuspermia. Oh, that the person does not have sperm at all. The nurse said the person will be needing a donor sperm. I said, have we done a mona provide for this person? He said, doesn't need it. I'm telling you, man, he needs his asperma. I said, if they have asperma like that, it can be obstructive asperma or secret asperma. My consultant kept quiet, small. Well, you know that it is my junior one that is teaching me what I'm supposed to know. Bible says we know that more than your teacher. But if you sit down there, your teacher will even say, where is this guy? I taught him. To, he does not even know more than one, one quarter of what I know. That's where diligence come into play. When I now went further, I now told me, I said some people might be producing spam. But because there is a blockage, some people have gonorrhea in the fact that I've blocked it. When we aspirate the spam from the, te the testes, the spam will come out. But when we get that kind of spam, we don't do IVF for them. We do what we call intracytosplasm spam injection. My organ said, no problem. I will send them to you. I know you are going to handle them well. Now, I can say this thing because I have gone to say I want to go beyond writing some from patient and I say I'm proud that I'm a gynecologist. I cannot go beyond that. How many baby has God given us through that process of assisted conception? Now, when that thing is like that, he not told me that, say, okay, if this is what we are going to do, in line with the 
con in, in line with conception. I said, let me go and read this thing. I was in the University of Valencia. That is in Spain. And when I was going there, they said the two fees was one point. I still remember in that year. It was one point million. I didn't have it. So I have 600,000 then. And that is what I have completely that I can spare. So I know I'm not going to go. But one of my professors said, ah, Emmanuel, I'm registering you for this thing. You have to go. There was somebody that had been looking for help in my life. That one person was supposed to be somebody that was related to my mom. This person is a senator. I'm sorry you because maybe I'm doing something, saying something that is true, this thing. I, they have names, but this person is a senator. And because he's a senator, I didn't hold him a single couple throughout. And that particular, don't let me say I didn't hold him. I owe him 2,000 because one time I went to greet him that time. He gave me 2,000. So, and that was all. And when I went to Abuja, when I was working, I think there, I was staying in his house. Ordinary food, they didn't give me. Yes, and transport, they didn't give me. But you see, I appreciate because he make effort to help me. I have empl I point employment with National Hospital and I have its House of Assembly thing through him. But God did not allow me to go there. They didn't sign my document. I, was, I served in Cross River. I was the best doctor of the year. I have a certificate of medicine. There is no way I applied. They will not take me. But what is it? I discovered one time they come in and I say, okay, they should come and work. I say, it's like God doesn't want me to work in teaching hospital. Let me stay. But it took me time before I can realize it. This is UCH. I never applied there. I don't know what the meaning of somebody having a certificate of merit. I have a certificate of merit award as the best doctor of the year. It was given to me by Donald Brook. That was in Cross River State in those days. I was retained. I said, I'm not going to stay. No. When we now have that thing that that person has been begging for long that he should give me letter, ordinary letter. One day, the man does, I just got to, I said, I'm, I'm now a consultant now. So, so thing. He said, okay, no problem. The man called me one time, said that, uh, I just received his call. He said, I'm on my way to Lagos now. At that time, I think I've finished building my house. And I said, maybe I found a small white car that was in that time. That was Rafa. Rafa just came out that time, so and that was the car. And if I tell you the history of how I was able to purchase the person bought it for himself. And he I I know the person I say, ah, can you say I should be paying the money small for I quickly hook into it. I don't even have money for that Rafa. So when I look at okay, I do I look at how much they are selling the car, I was astonished, if not because the thing just came in such a way that pay small small. So I took the car to go and greet. To go and get, said, the man says going to Lagos. When your life began to be important to some people, your life became relevant. This is the person I called before, it doesn't even take anything to assist, not, nothing. Now, when he now decided that I have finished, he thought that maybe let me just call. So, when he called, I remember they came and they parked in front of Ayifele, that Ayifele. They came in entourage. They came in entourage. Imagine somebody like me, the people that are, uh, 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 you know, it's a of federal project, you don't know what it means. And when I went there, I went to my car, I know he believed that the person that is coming to see me, we, is not likely to come with something good. So when I went there, even the uh, kind of car, my own, is over, and you know, it's Tokumbo that day, Tokumbo sometimes, some of them can look like new one. And uh, if they didn't tell you, we think that it was a new car. So when I park in front of them, he, I think he, he thought, and I knelt down before him, he thought, okay, this guy demands some respect. He said, uh, is this your, uh, it's not far, I said, it's not far. We got there, got to there, I said, is this your house? I said, it's my house. Why was it that that was the time my professor called me, that that thing that we are going to do in uh, uh, Spain, we expire by next week, and your money supposed to be paid that time. As I was receiving the call when I was entertaining him, I said that, oh God, I don't think I'll be able to make it. I have just 600 and it's 1.2. I would not be able to get it. He said, ah, it's okay. And when I dropped the call, because of what the man saw, the man told me that, what did I say? I said, it was one of my, I'm going for a program, but I don't have enough. He said, how much is the money? I said, the money is 1.2. He said, tomorrow I will transfer 1 million to you. 
I can mention the name. He would have that money was transferred because of another ulterior motive. But it served his function because that was the reason why I went there to do the training and I have my certificate. I have masters in biotechnology of human assisted reproduction and embryology. But that one is still theory. I still don't know how to do this thing. That's why I kept on now saying, with all this thing, I have to learn. I have to learn. I've never traveled out because I want to enjoy myself. I travel to add to my knowledge. So, what did, why did I mention that? If I have withdrawn because of that money, the person that picked his call at his level to call me, that is the time. You see, when you have not suffered and you get to a deep breach that you cannot proceed, God will not take action. That's why some things say that if you talk about that policy, that is where God's homes begin. Because, hey, ni moji alone. I've seen so many things in life that even God himself will discover that I'm not even allowing him to rest. Because I will put something that will make, and you know, the God is omnipotent. There is nothing you want to give in front of him that is not too big to handle. So, challenge him every time. You see, one thing is that when you ask God and you beg God, God do this thing for me. You know what you're going to do? Go to the Bible, pick one fact that support that thing, be using it to be talking to God. He said, Make me to remember my words because none of them will want their mate. I've honored my words more than my uh, pastor. Let me yes, that by that particular thing, when you say, God, you said this, you said this, you said this, he has to honor it. So, when I sit down and I discover some things like that, I always want to. In fact, if I'm sitting down there, I move this, the door open. I enter this way, the door open. I enter this way, the door open. Honestly, I will not be moving anyhow like that. I will step back again. God, why is the door open? No, I have to, I hope it's not just opening because of some abnormality. When the door is too smooth for me, that is when something strikes. When the door was smooth for me that time, that was when my mother died. Because if it was too, if I know that I should step down now, this is the time for your mother. Go and see her. And do you know one thing that I look at it that, that particular time? When my mom died, she wrote something down. And when they send it to me, and I look at what my mom they said, make sure you celebrate Roti me when it's 50. I say, so my mom knows that she will not be alive when I will be 50. And when she died, I was saying that this woman she was going for a, bed, for a wedding ceremony of somebody in a, a offer. So she will get away from me. And all of a sudden, they call me that you, uh, nobody even know why she, she died in the bedroom. She fell down. She was say there was a cut on her. Look at why can this woman die like this? I was now looking at uh, if this is the case, where, look, where are we going to bury this woman? Is it Ilone? Is it uh, Omano? Is it Isakpa? Is it other places? Because she has houses in that place. When we are in school, my mother will tell me so, tell us something. That if it was come to the worst, she will sell her house that, that we are not going to read. That is not going to be possible. She will drop something for us in the University of Illinois like that. We are three. Honestly, she's a pensioner. We will not even know the money that our mother is going to use to go back home. And you know, it's not that the money is even much. It's just a mega something to keep us alive. I will go, we are going to wait when everybody has finished in the school. You know, those days, some of these children, uh, these school people, they have, uh, what was it called? Milo, all this thing and cool like that. We go and be packing it in the hostel inside the uh, inside park. That is what we are going to sell for us to get transport down to our village. And when we get there, we go to secondary school. We tell the principal, we want to be teaching because we want to raise money. Because my mother had a stroke. Because she was still thinking about how we are going to survive. Even if we are broke in the school, we don't have the confidence to tell my mother I'm broke. I would rather sit down. I have a friend, Idowua Kiloye. He's in the UK now. He pay my school fees in 300 when they say they're going to... If I didn't go to Federal University, I wouldn't finish my education. 
They said they are not going to go for exam. And he came to me and said, are you not going to go home? I said that uh, I'm going to go. I think the guy knew that there was a problem. He just come to the uh, room and gave me, he said, he say, I've paid your school fees. My school fees then was 300 and something naira at that time, or 300 and something thousand. That was my school fee. I don't think it would be thousand, it would be 300 and something naira. Yes, they, they say he has school fees. He paid my 300 level school fees. My 400 level to 600 level, I don't have money to pay school fees. If you go to Lagos, there is a place in Durosele, they call it Durosele Hospital. Durosele, there is Atikeja. There is one doctor, they call him Dr. Morawo. There was one brother in, a, in, in school that time, took us to the place. That man said, ah, this is my brother. I was carrying tra- uh, what's it called? iron rod in a, 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 a worry. There is a place they call sharp trade in Abuli Egbe, a worry, you turn. You stay on top of it, like we have five like this. I will be carrying iron rod. It is the turn that you carry that going to use to pay you. When you are carrying iron rod like this, we have five like this, we are in like that, we are throwing the line. We go to Abe Okuta, we go to... When the police arrest us, we have to look for how we are going to get back. And when we are carrying that in your, the hand we get, this is your first layer like this. The hand got peeled off and it was paining me. When I got there, you know those people, they actually exposed me. Because I was looking for money to enter clinicals. From my 300 level to 400 level. So when I was sitting down there and I was carrying this thing, the... The, the people will say, when I'm laying there, they say, Dr. Guerin, Dr. Guerin. Delaying them, they actually help me, but I'm delaying them because the more they carry, the more their money. At the time, I didn't have the strength again. Because one, one man humiliated me in Ogun State. And sometimes, some people will humiliate you. Sometimes, just endure, sometimes, just look at what you are focusing. I was on the trailer and they want to carry. I was not even feeling fine. I was carrying this thing. They used to call me doctor. Doctor Benny, doctor, the man was so furious as if I was wasting their time down there. He said, is it doctor? Would I be doctor here? That I should leave that place. And I did not even bother. I just dropped myself from the trailer. And I dropped and I sat down there. I look at my life there. I said, what kind of life did I come to this world for? You know the same man now look at me after a few minutes. Maybe because I was just reasoning about my life. I'm not even thinking of what I'm carrying again. Because all these clothes, the back bearing here, your cornea, I worry. You might become black in your presence. Alone in the best they gave me that time. Maybe 300 naira. Maybe 300 maximum. Now, this man now came to, was telling them on the trailer. Those who are greeting me, ah, Dr. Pele, Dr. Pele, Dr. Pele. Indirectly, those people are, to, 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 maybe they are ridiculing me. But that's the way they call me, because they knew I was the doctor then. But a doctor, I'm a student. The man asked, is it Dr. Ewura? I'll be Dr. Ewura. Ah, one of your, I mama try one doctor in your money. The man now came to me, he said, is it true that you are a doctor? Sorry, I hope I'm speaking with some people. Because they say practical experience. If you go to that place, they call it Sharp Trade International. That's the name of the place. It's along Abuli Egba Awori Yuton. So when they got, I got to the place, the man had said, Dr. Wood, I've been there. I'm going to doctor. I now show him my ID card. He now looked at me. He was moved with passion. Some of all because of the way, and it all on Feko help wa response one by me, which is my lineage, you know. Blessing comes sometimes. I see that if make life difficult for me, if I mock me, if I ridicule me. That is why Bible says if it is possible, live at peace with all men. I'm going to come and tell you, live at peace with. That's why the Bible says, if it is possible. The man now told me something. He said, I should meet him at a Toyota bus stop in uh, Mushin the following day. I got to him. He gave me a receipt for tax collector that should be calculated. I don't know if some of us know. That time they said there is one man, they call it OG. That man used to eat human flesh in Lagos. That was the bus stop I was taking task collector. But per day, that time they were giving me 650. 
which is double the price of what they are giving me there, and I will have clothes by two. I can buy a complete cloth and trouser from Oshodi before I get to the house. And when I now go there to sit down with those people at shop trade, I will not be looking at them and say, I said, is, is it the kind of work that I'm doing? Now, that is where I was able to gather the money I used to buy my textbook, buy everything that I used to enter clinicals. And when I finished, the person I paid my school when I finished for Dr. Dako Morawo is the owner of Divine Divine Hospital in Lagos, and that is in Ikeja. He was working under Drusole Eden. The man is still alive. He's a pastor in the regime. The man will come in every month, every last Saturday of the month. I will stay in teaching hospital like this. Hope there is no problem. Oh, this thing. He's not giving me much, but at least I know there is somebody there for me. I have to go and carry my mother's fridge in the house. Carry it to teaching hospital. They gave me a room there. I was now, I'll be making sobo. And I'll be selling things there and pure water. That's what I was using to survive medical school. I you know God blesses that work. I decided not to even be making the sobo again. I started sealing the sobo. Later, there's something in that place because there was a time we were connected to the center bubble in the teaching hospital. They gave us another place down because I was doing well. So I started, we started joining in with the pure water. We called some people that are installing pure water there. And when you hear it, you call destiny pure water. It belongs to us. When I say horse, my service, my elder brother is also a medical doctor. So he's just a year ahead of me. You know, I told you, enter medicine. When I now, I enter medicine before him. He crossed to meet me in medicine. So if I know he has been in medicine, I will have gone for what I think I will go before. Because of my mother's dream. So, that was the thing that sustained us from medical school throughout. We cannot buy anything. We cannot do much. But you know, that money is sufficient for us to eat at least, not to borrow. And that was the way we move on to the time my brother finished and he now started his own house job. He's now collecting salaries. From there, we continue to move, move, and I became the first consultant in my family before my brother also went for his own residency. When I became a consultant, my brother is still a medical officer. And when he went for the exam, all my classmates have become a consultant. They are the one that my brother was doing, yes, I under him. Because of the respect they have for me, they respected my brother. Because they know the kind of life we live when we're in the university. So my brother have a smooth try throughout. Now God now move him again from that, move him to the level of the state director. So that is the way everything works for people. God have plan for us. And when I look at all this and I look at why is mommy not alive to see all this trend? But she has left when she believed that she will not allow any of her child to go before her. They were doing the barrier in Mwaron. I see so many ambulances, WHO, from Ilorin, from Mwaron, from everywhere. The Ibadan here, they are just as you carry the whole of Ibadan to that place. But what am I trying to say in essence that people knew how bad this woman has struggled, but knew how well her ending actually looked like. Pastor. So, I'll be rounding up now. Uh, but I want to conclude by saying that uh, what will make you to be successful is right there with you. And uh, if you have applied, applied this principle one by one, don't look at any obstacle. In fact, be expecting obstacle in your journey. So that when it comes, it will meet you on our way. Because that is a strategy that will make you to remain where you're supposed to be. When you earn it, this is what you earn. When you earn it, you will retain it. And that is the principle. And we are preaching today, and we are talking today, that some successes are there, that they are temporary, because of the way it is achieved. But, by the grace of God, when you follow this principle, it's going to be permanent.
I just said it now. I know that my wife is calling me and they are calling because of another thing. I told you I took a risk to come. But the most important thing, I know the risk have been achieved. And I've also achieved that because I believe in you now and I'll be going straight to the theater. So, and I didn't look at it as stress. I supposed to go and sleep. But you know what is driving me? What is driving me is that a life is still going to come to life now. And when it comes to life, I don't see any stress in it. That is your calling. So, thank you very much. Please join your hands together and let's pray for the person as he is going that they 